Hi guys, just a short disclaimer before I start the video or before you start watching the video. All of the information that I've compiled during this video has been uh, not super rigorously tested. I've only tested it like a few times post Destiny. Hasn't, I haven't had enough time to actually confirm my findings. But uh, generally, I think it is correct. If it is incorrect and you guys find out, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to uh, make a pinned comment with some of the changes that you guys suggest and what you guys think is wrong. So uh, yeah. If you guys find any discrepancies, if you guys think that some of the stuff that I'm doing is not correct, please let me know and uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you guys very much. Hello everybody, this is uh, Yugi. I'm back again with another video. This time it's also about Hero in Destiny. Uh, I'm going through some slightly more advanced mechanics this time for Hero as well as well certain things that you might want to know and certain things that might be important for you to know as a hero main if you're looking to take your game to the next level uh, it's not like super super important but i mean some of the stuff in here is uh it's a little bit more out of the way it's not stuff that you will see uh unless you've like explored the class a bit more so i'm just here to provide some information whether it's useful or not it's up to you to decide again hero nowadays has a lot of mobility in destiny it has a lot of uh, small tricks that you can do and it's completely up to you how you want to as well, it's basically up to your imagination how well you want to play the class. Uh, Hero in general is quite a boring class, so, you know, we have to find things to <laughs> spice, spice it up a little bit and make it a little bit more interesting. So, I will be going through a few key things for Hero and uh, hope you all enjoy the video. Alright, the first main thing that I want to talk about today is uh, Rush versus Dash Slash Distance. So, I've mentioned this before already in a previous video when I covered the Destiny rework for Hero about uh, the difference between Rush and Dash Slash and where you end up and what kind of distance you can cover with either of the two skills. Um, but I feel like this is important enough for me to reiterate because uh, it, it this, this really highlights how far you can go with uh, the new Dash Slash as compared to Rush and it can be a lifesaver in bossing. Especially since, uh, you know, Covering great distance is actually pretty important for a lot of different bosses. Um, I have experimented a bit with the rush with the dash slash and delay. It's actually not as bad as I think it is. I I think back when I was experimenting with it, I was doing it at two attack speed and two attack speed. There is quite quite a, quite a decent chunk of end delay, but for rush uh, for for at zero attack speed, which I am at now currently, uh, the end delay is much reduced, and I think it is an insane tool to use now. So uh, just for comparison's sake, let me do a quick comparison for you guys. I'm currently aligning myself together with this like step over here. The middle of my character is around this step. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rush and we'll see where I end up. And then I'll from uh, exactly from this position again, I will use dash dash and we'll see where we end up. Take note that dash dash does require a target. So I kind of have to, I kind of have to be a little bit closer so that dash dash will actually prop. Anyways, uh, if we use rush, this is where we end up. We end up at about the end of this stair here. Oh, it's a little bit inwards, but yeah, you get you get the idea. And now if we use dash slash, we end up all the way over here. So I, I did a little bit of a jump forward because I don't think I can actually reach from here. Um, Yeah, I can't. So basically I did a little bit of a jump forward and we end up all the way over here. So as you can see, this is a huge distance cover from somewhere around here all the way to directly on top of the boss here. Uh, It's pretty big. It's pretty substantial. Uh, if I want to use from a standing position, I'll have to be about here. So if I align myself with this crack over here, in this uh, staircase, the rush will end up at about the end of this staircase, direct, uh, like perfectly at the end of the staircase. However, if I use dash slash, I'll end up directly underneath the boss, which is pretty insane. It's uh, uh, This is like almost one whole other rush distance, I think. So if you do rush and then another rush, you end up basically here. And if you just use dash slash from here, we end up directly on top of the boss. So basically, it's like two rushes worth of distance. It's pretty huge. Uh, I can demonstrate the end delay, the, the lack of end delay now. So basically, you dash dash and you can immediately dash away again. Uh, if you don't change directions it's even faster, so you can dash dash into, into rush. The end delay is barely noticeable. It's maybe like a fraction of a second. It's really, really fast, as you can probably tell. So yeah, this is the first uh, key thing that I want. I want you guys to note is that dash slash is a incredible tool and uh, it's really limited only by your ingenuity of how you want to use it because you can use it in many many different scenarios you can use it while you're in the air you can use it while you're dodging away from things for example if you're dodging pillars and you can dash slash backwards there's many many ways to apply this skill and uh, 
it's very very interesting so some food for thought for you guys all right uh the second thing that we want to talk about is Valhalla I'm sure you guys know what the skill is uh you all know what it's about it's basically our new off burst slash on burst skill uh Valhalla has a bunch of active buffs it gives you 50 attack 30 crit rate 10 100 status resist 100 elemental resist for 30 seconds um but it also has the added added uh passive effect when it's activated. Passive effect when it's active. Okay, it has an added ex extra active effect where when you hit an enemy, you you actually hit them with sword strikes as well. And these sword strikes have a certain number of charges. Basically, you have twelve full sword strike charges, um, and they do uh, three sword attacks for every charge. So three sword attacks for every charge means that you do a grand total of uh, thirty six uh, sword strikes in the duration of Valhalla. So the interesting thing that we want to find out now, right now, is uh, how many swords, how long does it take for you to get all of these sword strikes out, right? So this is a uh, comparison at zero attack speed. I believe that these things have uh, have a cooldown based on how how often they can activate, so you can't get everything out all at once. Um, there's an easy way to check this. I can take off my green pot, but I don't really want to. <laughs> I'm lazy. But basically, in Maple C and GMS, you're mostly going to be bossing at zero attack speed anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Anyways, uh, basically once you use up all these sword strikes, uh, you they won't occur anymore after they use up. They are used up. So what we want to find out is how long it takes for you to get out all the sword strikes. So as you can see, the use count I've tested this out once already is thirty six times. So we will start a new BA, and we will stop once we see Valhalla hits uh, thirty six sword strikes. All right. So we will pre buff Valhalla. We'll begin analysis, and then we'll hit. So it's going up. And we'll wait until it hits 36. And we'll stop. So it took a grand total of 13 seconds for us to get all the sword strikes out. So why, why is this important? So this is important uh, because we, we want to know whether or not we can pre-buff Valhalla. Whether or not you're wasting time by pre-buffing, uh, wasting damage by pre-buffing Valhalla and things like that. Because in my recommendation when I did my previous uh, basic bossing guide, I recommended that you pre-buff things like Epic Adventure and Valhalla because they are hyper skills. And they take longer to cool down than uh, Soul of Burning Soul and Combo Instinct. So these things will slowly become off sync if you actually uh, buff them in the wrong order. Or you buff them in an order like you, let's say you buff Soul of Burning Soul first or you buff Combo Instinct first. They'll get out of sync. But basically this what, what this shows is that it doesn't matter whether or not you pre-buff for Hala or not. Because you're not losing any damage. Besides the fact that you're losing the attack buff for like the extra like maybe 5 seconds or whatever. That one is a small thing to me. I don't think it matters that much. What's important is that you can get all the extra sword strikes out of Valhalla, which is the main the main DPS and the main off burst slash on burst DPS that you're going to be doing with Valhalla. So as you can see, it only takes 13 seconds, which means that it fits perfectly within your RR4 or your weapon jump 4. Even if you're using RR3 or weapon jump 3, it also fits perfectly within it. So uh, this basically this is just uh, this is just so that you know that. Uh, anytime you pop your seed ring, you will definitely get all the sword strikes of Valhalla out within the duration. So you don't have to worry about pre-buffing Valhalla. You don't have to worry about losing DPS because you buffed it too early or whatever. As long as you have at least half the duration left, you'll be able to get all the sword strikes out. So yeah, again, pertinent information, important for hero mains to know. Okay, this one is a little bit more complicated. This one's a little bit more complicated. Um, basically, what we want to find out during this test is... Uh, how how much how important is it to reuse world river within your combo instinct so what, what 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 i'm trying to say here is that as we all know the usual bossing setup that you go for with hero that i explained in one of my previous videos for the basic bossing guide is you want to pre-buff everything <coughs> you want to sort you want to use a three-part combo so illusion world river rage uprising and then you want to be hitting with combo instinct now combo instinct lasts 30 seconds which means that uh your world river will definitely cool down within the duration of your combo instinct, right? So what happens when you press World Weaver right now is that you immediately get a instant, like, okay, this this is with the Elder Vault. <laughs> okay, shit. Anyways, you you uh, you instantly get pretty much a 110% final damage increase just from casting World Weaver once. Uh, uh, so uh, basically, we want to find out whether or not it's worth it to sacrifice a bit of DPS from not hitting with War Reaver during, uh, not hitting with Combo Instinct during your Combo Instinct, and then casting War Reaver in order to gain the extra final damage in order for the rest of your hits for the extra five seconds of extra final damage with when War Reaver is on. Follow me so far. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, but basically what I'm trying to say is hitting with War hitting with Combo Instinct. Uh, do the three part combo at the start. 
hit with combo instinct and then is it worth it or not for you to cast Bow River in between so that you can get extra final damage and continue hitting or should you just continue hitting your combo instinct in the first place? Right, you get what I mean. All right, okay, anyways. But basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a full buff rotation. Uh, I'm going to be casting all the skills and basically just whacking the boss or hitting the boss for like 30 seconds. And uh, for the first test, I'll do it with uh, with the World River in between. And for the second test, I'll do it without War River in between. So we'll see how much of a DPS increase or decrease there is, and whether or not it's uh, really worth it for you to use this. All right, so let's go. Okay, we're gonna start the first test. This is with War River. I'm gonna buff up as per normal. Um, all the standard things. I'm gonna try my best to only stick to within... I'm gonna try and buff up in the same order for the second one. Forgive me if I don't get it completely correct because, you know, I'm... Fingers are slow. Boomer fingers. But for the first one, we'll be using what we were right here during our combo instinct and we'll be going to hit until combo instinct runs out. It might be a bit of server lag here and there, uh, depending on, you know, when combo instinct runs out and all that kind of stuff. But hopefully not too much server lag. Okay, there we go. Alright, so we have a uh, 35 trail, looks like. Yeah, 35 trail for the first one. 35.6. So I'll take a screenshot of this and uh, we will compare it with the second BA later, with the one without Poor Reaver. So I gotta wait for my skills to cool down, so uh, I'll see you guys in four. Well, I mean, you won't see it, but I'll see you guys in four minutes. Okay, this is a uh, part two. This is a uh, second burst without War Reaver uh, in between. So we will test it out. We'll see exactly how much uh, we are going to be doing without War Reaver in between. I'll try and buff up. I'll try my best to buff up the same way that I did before so that there's no discrepancies. So yeah, bear with me if I don't get it completely correct. <laughs> this is a little bit difficult. It's only one take. Anyways, uh, let's go. So I'm just going to be hitting as per normal. I will not be casting War Weaver off cooldown this time. So we can compare the damage difference between the two. I stopped at 36 seconds just now exactly. Hopefully Combo Instinct doesn't uh, run out too early or too late so we actually get a fair comparison this time. And stop. Okay. This is 33.596. So, if we compare it to the BA that I did just now, I will show you guys the BA on screen here. Uh, you can see that, it, that there's about a 2 trail difference in between the two BAs. So, uh, 2 trail difference basically equates to... How much final damage is this? 2 divided by 35, or 33, sorry. It is a... Oh, math is not my strong suit right now, it's early in the morning. Let me whip out a calculator. It is a 6% final damage increase overall in terms of your burst. So as you can see, this is like a very, you know, it's not a very, very, very detailed test because I'm not running multiple simulations, but I can't be bothered to sit here for like hours on end to, <laughs> to go and compare these two things over and over. But, 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 uh, you can probably tell that the damage does increase and it's by about a 6% final damage increase, which is pretty significant if you consider that a lot of heroes damage actually comes within our burst. So is it worth it to cast more Reaver in between your combo uh, when you're doing combo instinct? To me, I think it's definitely worth it. You have to remember that this is like a perfect scenario where you're allowed to just stand there and hit the boss. So you're getting in every single hit of combo instinct possible, right? So that's why uh, the overall increase in damage, in the overall increase in final damage from using War Reaver is probably less weighted because like you get you're getting every single second out of combo instinct out perfectly. But in a real bossing scenario, you probably have to pause in between your attacks. There's no way you're going to bind the boss for 30 seconds. Even if you have a zero and a Kana and Lucid bind, it's very unlikely that you're going to bind the boss for 30 seconds straight, right? So, uh, proportionally, when you cast World Reaver and continue hitting with Combo Instinct, you're going to be dealing even a bigger proportion of your damage. So, in real, in like a real bossing scenario, this could go all the way up until like 10% final damage increase in burst compared to if you don't cast World Reaver halfway through when you're bursting. So, to me, this is a big deal. Um, I think it's well worth it to cast War River in between uh, your attacks for combo instinct 
it's well worth it to eat the slight DPS loss when you are casting the because of the, the slightly longer casting animation of the skill. Um, and it's something that for more advanced heroes is something that you have to get used to. You have to get used to the concept of using your War Reaver for as a DPS skill, especially during your burst. I mean, off burst, this is another debate entirely whether or not you should be using it uh, whenever it's off cooldown in order to maximize your damage, right? But on burst, uh, especially since hero is so burst reliant, I feel like this is completely necessary. You have to be doing this as much as possible. It's good to build a good habit of being able to survive without your iframe for an extended period of time so that you can be using your iframe as a damage skill or as a damage buffing skill during your burst, right? So those are my thoughts on using War Reaver during your burst. Um, yeah, that's about it. Actually, I was thinking about something else to say, but that's that that that's about all I have to say for this for this topic. So yeah, uh, make sure that you guys are paying attention to uh, your your War Reaver timing. Oh, the other thing, yes, okay, this is the slightly more interesting thing, interesting thought that you can think about during uh during your burst is the usage of a cooldown hat. So, for example, right now, uh, War Reaver cooldown is for me with. Uh, Mercedes Union, 18 seconds, right? Which means that I can cast it once at the start of my BA, once at the start of my BA with a uh, combo instinct, and then 18 seconds later, I will be able to cast it again for a final damage buff. By the time I get to cast it a third time, it is out of, uh, I I'm out of combo instinct already because that will be 36 seconds of a cooldown, so I can't use it a third time to boost my combo instinct damage even more. However, if you have a cooldown head, let's say you have a 4 second cooldown head, this, this cooldown drops to 14 seconds, which means that you can cast it once at the start of your burst, once in the middle, and if you have a little bit of server lag, you might be able to cast it one more time at the at the end of your uh, at the end of your instinct and still continue to hit the boss. So I am unsure how good this is. I need to do further testing based on you know how effective a cooldown hat is versus that. Uh, but in my opinion, it looks pretty good because uh, cooldown hat basically what it does is it increases the uptime of your final damage, which is a lot of final damage by the way. It is like I I didn't I, I neglected to show this right at the start just now, but basically at two one six percent final damage, I don't have yellow vault. If I cast just War Reaver by itself, it is almost a hundred hundred and ten percent final damage increase. It's hundred and six around there final damage increase for five seconds just casting one skill. So. Uh, when you reduce the cooldown of War Reaver, it means that the uptime of your final damage buff is increased even more, which means that you can afford to play even more risky or you can afford to play even more aggressively with this skill to do even more damage uh, because you have your final damage buff up all, uh, more uh, more often than not, right? So 4 second hat to me is something that can be considered, 5 second even maybe if you have a legend airport as well. So uh, being able to cast War Reaver like even more times during your combo instinct is something that maybe I will have to test, but I can't test it myself because I don't have cooldown hat. Maybe I'll borrow friends' hats. Uh, some of my uh, more funded friends <laughs> that have cooldown hats, I'll test out with their hats and we'll see how it goes from there. Anyways, just in, just just something interesting to note. I will uh, probably do a little bit more testing and get back to you guys on this in the future. All right, on to the next section. Okay, now we have the final section of the video. So this one is uh, well, this one is actually probably something that I consider the least important of all these like small tips and tricks for hero uh, post destiny. This one is not really a post destiny thing, but I feel like it's something that heroes should know about so that you can at least apply it if you want to apply it in your own bossing and your in your own like for example dojo. Uh, and this is something called force sinking yellow vault of destruction. So. What I mean by force sinking yellow vault of destruction is uh basically for all of you that don't know, uh Tendanian rune or yellow vault blah, 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 of destruction for Maple Sea, whatever the hell this skill's name is, it's I can't pronounce it properly for the life of me. Um has its inter its own internal cooldown, right? So when you hit, it goes on cooldown for 90 seconds and it gives you a 30 second final damage increase. For this is for specifically for Genesis weapon heroes. Um and this is terrible because it's a 90 second cooldown skill that doesn't sync up with any of our bursts or off burst, which is uh, very, very, very terrible. <laughs> it's very bad because uh, it will always prop off cooldown whenever whenever it wants to because it doesn't sync up well with any of our skills. We don't have a 3 minute burst. I hit Nexon, we still don't have 3 minute burst. We are 2 minute, 4 minute class. This skill is basically not useless, but it's a lot less useful for us as heroes because we are 2 minute, 4 minute, right? So, uh, this is this idea is not from me. I will not take credit for this idea. Um, I watched this. I watched a Korean hero put this into practice myself, and I have uh, figured out what he's been doing to make it work. Uh, it is a little bit impractical, um, but I will show you how to do it. Basically, 
uh, the, the main premise of this is that when you hit with Yellow Vault of Destruction and the final damage buff runs out, so after the 30 second final damage buff runs out, uh, if you switch weapons, if you unequip your weapon and equip a different weapon, and then you switch back to your Genesis weapon, the cooldown of Yellow Vault of Destruction does not maintain at 60 seconds. So you can imagine when you first use it, it's a 90 second cooldown. After the 30 second final damage buff, it becomes 60 second cooldown, right? But if you switch weapons after the final damage buff has been changed, you switch to a different weapon and you switch back, the cooldown of Yellow Vault of Destruction actually resets all the way back to 90 seconds. So what this means is that in total, the cooldown will be 120 seconds. You get what you get my drift because like first you have 30 seconds of final damage buff and then you have another ad added 90 seconds because you reset the cooldown so in total this means 120 second cooldown which syncs up perfectly with heroes skills uh <laughs> this sounds so this sounds so out of the way but it's actually true and i can i can show you how it works so basically what what's gonna happen is i'm gonna hit the dummy i'm gonna wait until yellow draw the little bomb of destruction runs out and then i'm gonna switch weapons switch back and then uh, I'm, we're gonna wait, and uh, we're just gonna keep hitting until my Valhalla comes off cooldown again, and then we'll see whether or not Yellow Vault procs at that moment. All right. So I'm gonna turn on Valhalla. I'm gonna hit the dummy. Uh, once the final damage buff runs out, switch, switch back, continue hitting. Once once Valhalla comes off cooldown, we'll see whether or not it syncs up. All right. So this is gonna be like two minutes of me just hitting a dummy. So yay. So first of all, I'm gonna hit. As you can see. Final damage buff is going. Uh, a little bit awkward, we're just going to be sitting here and waiting for this final damage buff to go away. <laughs> uh, bear with me, this is all in the name of science. By the way, I never mentioned this, but I really enjoy uh, Hero's new voice animations. It's great. Okay, so Yellow Vault is about to run out. I let it run out. I stop attacking so that I can get out of a combat stance. So Yellow Vault runs out, you can see the 60 second cooldown left. I swap weapons, I swap back, and then we continue hitting. It says that it's a 60 second cooldown here, but uh, we will see. Stopped attacking there because of anti AFK. I cannot believe I'm just sitting here and hitting a dummy yet. Like early in the morning for like two minutes straight. <laughs> the things I do for videos sometimes. Okay, Yellow Vogue should be running out. And it ran out. You see the cooldown ran out, but the skill is not proccing, as you can probably tell, right? The skill is still not proccing. Oh, I didn't do the thing that I said I was going to do, which was use Valhalla to actually measure it properly. But you're going to have to take my word for this, I'm not going to sit here through another 30 seconds of, or through another 2 minutes of me hitting this damn dummy. So in exactly 30 seconds after that skill ran out, I mean you can test it using the video I guess, you can watch the video footage and time 30 seconds if you really want to. But basically... In about another 30 seconds, there we go. Yeah. Yellow Vault procs again. So what this means is, like I said, this force sinks. It's a force sink. It forces your Yellow Vault of Destruction or Tendanium. I'm just going to use Tendanium Ruin. It's easier to say because GMS has better naming sense than Maple see. Basically, your Tendanium Ruin force, forcefully sinks up at 120 second cooldown because you, you force swap the weapons. You swap, you swap to one weapon and you swap back. All right? Understand? Now, I have to talk about the downsides of this. So there are, there are a few downsides to this, obviously. Uh, the first that you have noticed when I swap weapons in the first place was that when I swap weapons, I lose all my combo ops. That one is a uh, given. That one that one uh, is definitely a downside. Now, the reason why this is actually a bit more... Uh, it's a bit more viable now in, in, uh, in post-Destiny is because you do actually don't need combo ops to use Bow Reaver anymore. So for example, if I swap weapons like this, and I swap back, you can see that I lost all my combo ops, I turn them on, I can still use Bow Reaver. So what that means is that, sure you lose a, you lose combo ops worth of damage for a while, but you also, what, what, what also happens is that you don't lose any of your survivability. Right, because you are still able to cast Bow Reaver, and uh, you can still, you can still, you know, play defense, you can still use that as, as a defensive tool while you recharge your combo ops. You get what I mean? 
Uh, of course, your Enrage also doesn't turn off. The toggle doesn't turn off when you swap weapons, so that will always be on. You don't have to worry about that. It's just that you have to re-toggle your combo ops again in order to in order to regain them. But you can still use War Reaver, so, you know, defensive tool is still there. Now, the other caveat that we have to talk about uh, is obviously that um, it's really difficult to swap weapons during a boss fight, right? Because th this, primary, this primarily works in KMS because they have a different swapping system compared to us. In KMS, as long as you don't take uh, touch damage from a boss, uh, as long as you don't take touch damage, as in body touch damage from a boss, and two, you don't attack the boss, you don't put yourself purposefully put yourself into a combat state, you are able to swap gear. So even if you take other sources of damage, for example, let's say Lotus Debris or Lotus Push, or uh, Damien's uh, Damien's Push, or like I don't know, Hila's Swipe, uh, uh, Slashing Attack, um, as long as you even if you take these forms of damage, you can still swap gear in KMS, which makes it a lot easier for them to swap back and forth in between weapons. In Maple C and in GMS, it's a completely different thing because for Maple C and GMS, when you take any source of damage whatsoever, it doesn't matter whether it's touch damage, whether it's external damage from like environment, envir environmental damage from like balls or from like debris falling from the sky, you will be unable to swap gear, regardless of what you do. So that's why gear swapping in Maple C is a lot harder. That's why sometimes you see in KMS videos, it's a lot easier for them to swap drop gear. It's a lot easier for them to swap into different seat rings because uh, they have that innate swapping mechanic that we don't have, which is super annoying. I wish we had that. It would make my life so much easier, especially when it comes to swapping rings and bosses. So so that, that again is another thing that KMS has an inherent advantage over us uh, in terms of this new tech or this not new tech, but this like uh, a bit more niche tech for hero in order to force sync your... your uh, Tendanian Ruin together with your Instinct and together with your with your Soul Burning Soul. So, like I said, this one is a little bit weirder. It's a little bit, I would say, less uh, less applicable to your bossing. It's, a, it's something interesting to keep in mind. So, like I said, this is only limited by how uh, creative you can get with how you want to sync. <laughs> I wish this wasn't the case. I wish you didn't have to do this kind of thing. But it's, it's limited by how creative you want to get to sync together your boss and your off boss with, uh, with Tendanian Ruin. Um, it's slightly more applicable in Dojo, I guess, if you're willing to sacrifice a bit of DPS because you are losing the extra final damage buff for a longer period of time, but you act, you forcefully sync it together with your with your uh, Soul of Burning Soul and Valhalla. So it's slightly more applicable in Dojo. But then again, in Dojo, I would say that it's not that applicable either because you are also waiting in between floors for your burst to cool down, for your off burst to cool down. So in that respect, your Tandanian Ruin will somehow, well, some, some, not somehow, but it will eventually sync up with your combo instinct and your War Reaver as, uh, combo instinct and your Soul Burning Soul as well. It's just that it's not as guaranteed, right? So it, it, it might be an interesting do dojo tech if you want to think about it, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm just here to provide like uh, weird information. I'm not here to actually tell you how to use it. <laughs> so think about it. You know, if you figure something out, you can let me know in the comments, I guess, and uh, shoot me a PM or something and see if. And you can show me your different ways of using it. Maybe I'll include it in a video and we can uh, all learn from it. But anyways, that is pretty much it for all the small tips that or small things that I discovered so far in Destiny. And all the small little uh, things that I wanted to test out. Um, I hope it was useful. I hope that you guys learned something new. Well, for the more advanced heroes, I hope it was useful and hope you learned something new today. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.